The language in our Constitution is very complex around this issue. I got to tell you, this scene really just exploded. I'm going to step out of the frame here. You can see all the way up to the Capitol right next to me. This is a broken power line. The power line uh, just seemingly snapped. Representative Jones, Representative Jones, how do you feel? What do you have to say? that the people are, st are still demanding action. In Tennessee and Kentucky, recreational cannabis is illegal, but if people are willing to make the drive over the Ohio River crossing state lines into Illinois, that's where it becomes legal. Representative Jones, what's it like to see this level of support from your colleagues? From your supporters, really. This is about people power. It shows that people power is the ultimate power, not the decision of Speaker Cameron Sexton. You can see just how much. I can't even see my feet. Look at this. My feet are completely buried. Representative Justin Pearson has just been expelled. But given that the Tennessee supermajority has continuously pushed or advocated for anti-LGBTQ legislation, I would say that possibility seems unlikely. Alex. Interestingly enough, if you take a look right here, you might see this orange dot. We actually had an earthquake just today here in Tennessee. Tension, there were arguments, and uh, how about an ostrich egg? Other than the falling of a Jenga tower or the roll of a die, it's all quiet in the room. Yet, it's also never been louder for Amy Farrell and her kids. Charlie was the first deaf person that I ever met. Farrell was shocked when she found out her daughter Charlie was deaf. Charlie's older brother, Logan, is not. I want Charlie to have just as much opportunity in life that my hearing son has. And until 2019, that equity was hard to come by. But then the Deaf Mentor and Parent Advisor Program started. A lot of these parents that have never been around anybody that has had that is deaf, they don't know how to communicate with their child. The program helps to bridge that gap while also providing leadership for the children to follow. Without that deaf mentor program, we were on an island trying to get our own support, which really uh, new to the um, disability world is not something that, that we wanted. Knoxville Republican Senator Becky Duncan Massey sponsored the legislation to help create the program. There's just been one problem with it. It's funded on a non-recurring basis, which means every year the affected families have to go to the legislature and plead to continue the funding. But Massey just filed Senate Bill 4 to potentially make that funding permanent. We hope to just pass it once and for all, have it in recurring funding because it really does make a huge impact to uh, these families. If you'd have told Farrell two years ago that this program would change her life, she wouldn't have believed you. I couldn't picture it because I was knee deep in grief and emotions um, and just what am I going to do for my child. And now looking back, it is beautiful. It's wonderful. I feel confident in our family environment that we're all connected stronger than we ever have been before. It's an attitude of gratitude during Thanksgiving week. Now, this isn't the first time Massey has brought a bill to try and make that funding permanent. Last year, she did the same, but it got tied up in a finance subcommittee. And Massey says this year, though, with the data and parent stories, she feels confident it at least has a shot. And it's time to resign. Why is that? You make those. You, you can tell. Chapel Hill Republican Representative Todd Warner is calling on Lieutenant Governor Randy McNally to resign. In a release, Warner called McNally a predator for the comments he left on a young man's racy Instagram posts. Uh, do you have evidence of that? Or why you say that? And somebody asked why didn't watch the videos, look back at the posts. Franklin McClure tells us he was 17 years old when McNally first connected with him through social media. But he says McNally didn't know his age. I he wasn't aware of my age, so I wouldn't, you know, flag him on that, but I was 17 at the time. Republican leaders distanced themselves from Warner after House session Thursday, saying he acted alone in his calls for McNally's resignation. I don't think he's ever sat down and spoken to Lieutenant Governor in his tenure here, so I find it interesting that you would make a speculation without knowing the person, first of all. Um, that's his opinion. As you can see, he signed it himself. No one else signed on to the letter. Um, so it is what it is. Democrats point to Warner's ties to a federal bribery and conspiracy investigation into former House Speaker Glenn Cassida and his aide Cade Cothran. McNally called for Cassida to resign amid the 2019 investigation. I think you need to take a close look at the, the, the individual who, who issued that statement, and I would caution, uh, urge caution on his part. Um, you know, something along the line of throwing rocks at glass houses. The Tennessee Journal reports Warner ate dinner with Cothran at a Nashville steakhouse last week. This has nothing to do with the FBI investigation. Did Kate Cothran ask you to do this? No. 
We tried to catch up with McNally after Senate session Thursday morning. Your Representative Warner is calling on you to resign. But he didn't answer questions. McNally's office did send us a statement not long after that moment. It reads in part, I serve at the pleasure of the members of the Senate and my caucus. As long as I have their confidence, I am committed to the important work of this state. Mark. Days after a week of huge protests at the state capitol, more are coming tonight. The People's House now has the people on the outside looking in. Over the last 10 days, thousands have descended upon the legislature, both to protest gun control and the expulsion of beleaguered former representatives Justin Jones and Justin Pearson. You do not use the House floor to protest. There are rules, there are policies, there are procedures that we all abide by. Republicans justified the move, saying you can't break rules without a punishment. If their community elects them and elects them to come back into here, that's fine. I hope at least that the message has been sent that we have rules that allow for everybody to be heard here. Though Democrats pushed back, arguing the punishment didn't fit the crime. The immediate response of my colleagues is not to pass an assault weapons ban or red flag laws, but it's to expel their colleague who is demanding that we act. Monday, Nashville's Metro Council is expected to vote Jones back into the legislature. But either way, you'll see him back in the House. Whether I'm a member on the inside or a community member on the outside, I'll continue to stand with the people. Monday evening is expected to see yet another protest as people are pushing for Speaker of the House Cameron Sexton to seat Jones immediately once he's reappointed. When I asked his office if they planned on reappointing the former reps at all once the county commissions vote for them, they wrote, the two governing bodies will make the decision as to who they want to appoint to these seats. Those two individuals will be seated as representatives as the Constitution requires. Until that happens, though, the music goes on. In Nashville, Chris O'Brien.